Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Buenos dias. I said, buenos dias. Amen. Good morning. God bless everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say, what time is it? It's offering time. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's offering time. How you doing, Mother Dixon? Amen. Praise God. How you doing, Mama? God bless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be turning to two different scriptures this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. But before I do, we have a testimony. Amen. I'm going to call Brother PJ up here. Deacon PJ, excuse me. Deacon Paul Allen Jr. He's going to come forth with a testimony. I'm going to put my mask back on and get out the way. Amen. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm blessed to be here, blessed to see you all today. Uh, so yes, I have a testimony. My testimony kind of goes back to earlier this year when um, I was at my old job working at uh, the hospital and I was looking for a change, looking for something different because things weren't, um, in my spirit, I was ready for transition, right? I was ready for that to happen. So I was praying, Lord, Lord, lead me, Lord, lead me. And so he had led me to apply for this job, right? And um, working at San Manuel. You know, you guys know San Manuel, the casino yes. here in the Highland. Um, so I was doing the application, and I was like, you know what? This is not what I want to do. Why am I filling this out? You know, I'm just not going to finish it. So I didn't finish it. So then a month later, it came by. I get a phone call, ran the number. Hey, are you Paul? Yes, I'm Paul. Because by this time, I, like, applied to, like, a bunch of jobs, right? So you don't know. I don't know who was calling me. Um, so the lady said, yeah, are you Paul? We got your resume from our application online. I'm like, well, who is this from? From Sam Manuel. And I was like, oh, I didn't, in my mind, I didn't finish an application. And so she said, yeah, I noticed that you didn't complete your application, but based upon what you did input, you're one of the high candidates that we need to be considered for the position. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so she interviews me, and we go through this. There's different stages of the interview, like three interviews. And then it gets to the part where we negotiate the salary, right? And so um, we get to the point she asks you, what do you want? Amen. And then I'm like, what do you mean, what do I want? Say, what kind of salary do you want? And I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, most <laughs> jobs don't, they don't tell you that, right? They give you this range. We're in this range. This is where you have to stick. So at the gate, they were like, okay, we'll give you whatever it is you want. So I gave them a, a range, right? Um, I gave them the range. She comes back, and she gives me the base of my range. And then I was like, um, no, that was just a start, you know. <laughs> that was just getting your ballpark. You know, I want something a little bit more. And so they went back to their executives, and they gave me the max of my range that I requested at that time. Amen. So I was like, wow, look at God. Look at Jesus, right? And so that was me and my wife. We were praying. So, man, the Lord is really, you know, looking for you to transition there. You know, all of this is like a stepping stone to where you need to go. So, okay, great. So I accept the position. I accept the job. I'm on the job. I started beginning of last month, right? I think it was July the 7th, I believe, or the 6th, one of the two. And I'm on the job, and they have asked, hey, aren't you, um, aren't you a licensed therapist? I was like, yes, I am. Okay, we're going to do something. This is, and that was all that they had shared. So, like, okay, you know, you're going to do something. That's fine. Um, a week later, so we're going to, to promote you. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, we're going to promote you. I know you haven't, I haven't hit my 30 days. Um, but based upon your qualification and based upon what you have shown us here thus far, your skill set, your commitment, you're so hospitable, you get along with everyone, you're on time. Like, you've been showing us this great skill set, and we want to keep you. And so we need, we're going to uh, promote you to this higher position. Um, and then what salary do you want again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving every minute of it. And I'm sitting here like, um, me thinking it was more of a lateral, you know, like a transfer kind of thing. But apparently it was not. It was a full promotion. 
Um, and so they had me to go online to update my um, my uh, application and resume and within our work system, right? And so initially, I was going to just put like basic information and just upload my resume, and that was it. But the spirit limits are no, fill it out. And we, as we all know, when we fill out an application, they can be long and tedious, and you don't want to do it all. But Lord said, fill everything out down to the skills, down to everything. And so I included everything. Um, and then my director came back, and he was like, Paul, I did not know you did so much. Like, your resume has listed so much leadership skills, professional skills. I had no idea. It's like, well, you got the resume with my initial interview, but, uh, you know, okay, here's a refresher. And he said, okay, put down what, what salary range you want. And so I put it down the range that I gave me, and he gave me the max of my request for my salary for this promotion again. So when that song comes on, you know, I'm a child of God. It just lets you know that, hey, that when you ask the Lord for whatever it is you want, like a parent, right? Our children ask of what they want, right? We keep give it unto you. All you have to do is open up your mouth, ask the Lord, stay in faith, stay in prayer, right? And it's yours. And sometimes we get, sometimes we can get discouraged because we don't see it happening. We don't see the change. We don't see what we want to see, right, in our own flesh. But when we tap in that spirit, right, we know that God is always working. God is always on our side. God is always leaning him. God is always for us. God is always in the door in the room for us, talking to those executives, talking to those directors in your favor, right? And for me, it was another reminder that how good God is. I have never met anyone in my time who's been on a job less than 30 days and got promoted and got the salary that I requested. Not what they wanted, but what I requested. So if that ain't God, if that ain't faith, if that ain't favor, then I don't know what. So we can give God some praise. We can give God some glory. Continue to give your offering and your tithe because that's where it's at. Once you pour into the church, he will pour into you. God bless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. Look at God work. Amen. I asked him to come up. I'm going to take my mask off in a second. I asked him to come up because I had been encouraging the best I could the church to continue to give. Amen. We have projects going on. We got stuff we're doing. Amen. And the stuff is not cheap. And I've been trying to tell you that there's an anointing on us. Yes. A amen. Yes. Can I take this off now? Praise God. Amen. Whew. Glory to Jesus name. <laughs> I know my beard messed up. It'd be jacking. It. Oh, I'm good. All right. Praise God. And so, amen. I want to read two scriptures and then we're going to give you an opportunity to tap into this anointing which you're giving. Amen. I'm going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. I'm going to slow down. I almost forgot. They're translating. Amen. I'm going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. And then there's a similar verse in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. When you have it, let's stand to our feet. Praise God. Second Thessalonians 3.13. We say God bless you to PJ. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, oftentimes when individuals call me for a reference to verify uh, individuals' information, you know, it's good to use your pastor yes. as a reference. Amen. Amen. I don't, I, we know the world is crazy, but they ain't that crazy. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? They know that Christians are supposed to have different characters. You hear what I'm saying? OK. And when I gave him a reference, I was on the phone with somebody in HR or, or somebody or maybe the, the manager or the hiring person for almost at least 30, 40 minutes. And so that that, that was and she was telling me we want him. And there's been a couple of them trying to get him, too. But praise God. And so we give God the praise. Are you there? Second, Th second Thessalonians, chapter three and verse 13 says, but ye. Brethren, 
That's 3 and 13. But ye brethren, obviously he's talking to the church. It says, be not weary in well-doing. Amen. Then we can go to Galatians chapter 6. And verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Amen. I was wondering, I said, where mama go? <laughs> she over there. <laughs> okay. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. We give God the praise for those verses. Amen. I just have a few things to say very quick. PJ didn't already say what needed to be said. But when it says to grow weary, I underlined that this morning as I was preparing my sermon. And we need to pay attention to the word grow. Grow weary. In other words, it's saying that a person's initial condition is not the place of is not weary. They're not weary. But it's I wrote down it connotes. A gradual. Process of declining faith. This is what came to my spirit. It, 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 it connotes really is denotes. It says it. It denotes a gradual process of declining faith. So the scripture is letting us know, don't do that. <laughs> you know, you have to fight against that. Oftentimes when I look at uh, first lady and I, my finances and the enemy try to tell me that things are tight and you can't do this, can't do it. Know what I do to him? I fix him. I give more than I was going to give. That's what I do. And it works. OK, I'm not going to I don't want to go deeper because I start preaching on this and I got another message. So we want to say, God bless you. God bless you. We want to bring the ushers. You're under the uh, the direction of our usher, uh, Deacon Patrick and, or Brother Patrick and Deacon Williams. Amen. We want y'all to when your time of prayer, be praying for Brother John. He went and got vaccinated yesterday and he's not feeling good today. It's just the tiredness. Everybody knows that it makes you tired. You know, you know, especially now since people are the children is going to school. It makes sense to. Uh, uh, hey, take care of business. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to bring first lady up here. She's going to stand next to me. Let me give her a microphone. Nobody's used this one today, baby. You just go ahead and bless that offering. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand and stretch our hand toward the offering. Amen. I was just thanking God this morning when I was fixing my breakfast, eggs and toast. Amen. And I like to buy organic eggs. And, but the Lord just blesses through the food bank. Amen. So I said, Lord, I thank you for these eggs. I didn't have to spend no eight, ten dollars for them. And just praising him, Lord, how he's just been so good to us. Amen. Amen. My, my cupboards are overflowing. Amen. With good food. He gives me what I want. And, and you cannot. I'm not trying to overtalk. No, no, Pastor, no. You got it, baby. You cannot beat God giving. Amen. Amen. So it came, I was listening uh, early this week to Charles Stanley say, don't miss an opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Don't miss an opportunity to give into this work that's being done. Amen. 
because God called us here to do it. Amen. And when you give into it, he's going to bless you in your household. Amen. So, Father, we thank you thank today, you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and we magnify your name, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Because we know that you are true to your promises, Lord. You say when we give, you shall give it back to us. Press down, shaken together, running over. You yes, said man will give into our bosom. And we receive that right now in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for your yes, goodness, Lord. your mercy, your grace, Lord God. Through these times that we're going through, Lord God, hallelujah, you have given to us overflow, Father. Yes. And we thank you and we magnify your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is our year of what? Abundant overflow. Praise God. Now, you tell me something. You, you, can't, you see somebody that's been on the job less than a month. Number one, going in there. You get to, you get to tell, say what you want. Now, that's the favor of God. And you've been there less than a month. Most probation periods is 90 days. Some even longer than that. And I'm going to be real about it. A lot of these jobs as cheap as the day is long. Amen. They run around talking about they can't get employer employees. You give them some, put some more money up there. You'll get some employees. Amen. The day of working for 14 and $15 an hour when you grown ain't working no more. Somebody say man. And as believers, we got that. We got. Come on. We've got to, how can you take care of a household with $15 an hour? Or don't even, I wouldn't even try. You can't do it. We've got to put a demand on our faith. Amen. Our God supplies all of our needs. Not in accordance to the world's economy. Not in accordance to America or whatever country you live in. But it's in accordance to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. I do have a word I want to share with you today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to primarily be in Mark. Amen. And I'm going to be in Romans primarily. Amen. We want to share this word with you. Praise God. So I would ask you, first of all, amen. Glory to God to go to Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, and then we're going to be in Mark chapter 9. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word. Ask your anointing upon me. Bless, Father God, the, the hearers, that they might be receivers of your word. We come against every foe to faith in a spirit that will try to hinder, resist, or impede our growth, maturity, and progress in Christ, we rebuke and cast you down and out of here. In Jesus' name, we say we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Those that agree, say amen. amen. Are you there? Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Amen. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith. In God. A amen, somebody. Now let's go to Mark chapter 9. We're going to work from there. Mark chapter 9. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 9. And verse 14. We want to say God bless to our Facebook audience. Amen. And those who will be watching via YouTube. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you for inviting us into your home. My name is Pastor Cliff Sessom. This is our, our church name, is Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside, and that's in Southern California. We just believe that God has a word for you. Amen. And God bless you. Amen. You know, you have to say that. Uh, Mark chapter nine and verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. And the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed. And running to him, 
saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? In other words, what are you asking my disciples? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Can't talk. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Okay, so this demon knows it's got to obey Jesus. And it starts cutting up. Right when it's time for it to come on up out of there, it starts cutting up. And he asked his father, how long ago since this came unto him? And he says of a child, in other words, this stuff been going on for a long time. And oft time it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Here you go. But if thou canst do anything. Have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I may as well finish reading it. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and started cutting up some more and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. He, he, you know how we lay hands on folk and they fall out he was as one dead in, in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Usually when we preach or teach from this particular text, we emphasize the necessity of fasting and prayer. But today, I'm going to take it a different way. I want to deal with really the subject of faith. And I've got for a title, Wherever Faith is Present, The Impossible is Possible. I'll say that again. Amen. Wherever, wherever, whether you're in church within these four walls or you're on your job, in the department store, at the auto repair shop, wherever, I feel the power of God, wherever faith is present, the impossible is possible. We should never underestimate the power of faith. See, what you believe determines what you receive. So we need to make sure that what we're thinking and what we're believing is 
in agreement with the word of God. Somebody say amen to that. So we got to be believing and thinking correctly. I'm trying to make sure I don't got to have too many notes up here. In our text, Mark chapter 9, this verses 14 through 29, it tells us, amen, or it gives us an account of a, a deeply distressed father who learned firsthand about the power of faith. He had a son who was severely demon possessed. This boy wasn't just demonically affected. These demons also violently attacked him. Amen. These demons constantly tried to kill him. The Bible says it threw him in the fire sometime. Sometime it threw him in the water. But as far as. As the father was concerned, and sometimes we, when we, when we uh, preach from this, we, we give the, the father, amen, a bad <laughs> name, and I'm a bad rep, and I'm going to help y'all with that today. But as far as this father was concerned, he somehow knew that this situation was, ir was, 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 was reversible. Huh? He knew it, but he had a battle going on. Come on. So in desperation, he brings his son to these disciples. What's a disciple? Root word, discipline. Somebody who's taught by another. Someone who sits under the tutelage, the mentorship, has a father-son type of relationship. So that whatever the father does, the son is able. You, you understand, what, understand what I'm going with this? So he brings them to the disciples. They weren't able to help this man. They weren't able to cure the son. So apparently after repeated and unsuccessful attempts to cast these demons out, finally he's brought to Jesus. Amen. Now, in verse 23. In verse 22, the father says, if thou canst do anything, this is where the father oftentimes gets the bad rep. What he's really saying, he's not questioning whether Jesus can do it. Whether, what he's really doing is he's affirming that Jesus can. He's saying, I know you can do anything. So since you can do, he used the word if though, he said, so since or if it's true that you can do anything, have compassion on us and fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. But then in verse 23, we need to get this because Jesus puts a lot of responsibility back on his father. Yeah. In other words, it's not about whether I can do it because I know I can. All right. All right. He says, if you can believe yeah. all things are possible Hallelujah. to him that believeth. Amen. Glory to God. And, 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 and so, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. What G, the inference here goes back to a couple weeks ago when I preached about uh, faith, I mean, love being unconditional, but, but blessings being conditional. Right. Amen. We, we heard that word if over again. Right. Well, what Jesus is doing, he's setting the conditions. He's saying there's some condition, a condition that you must meet. It ain't on me. Oh, I'm going to deal with this. So the inference is that certain conditions must be met. See, this father, he had faith in Jesus' abilities. But the problem was, he said, help thou my... Oh, come on, y'all know where I'm going. You see, the problem was his mind. Uh, was bombarded with all the other times, including when he brought his, brought his son to the Jesus' disciples, that they were unsuccessful in curing his son. Ah. And so he has faith over here. 
But his mind keeps playing this tape, this memory thing of all the other failed attempts. And what it amounted to was unbelief. So, 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 so understand something. See, oftentimes people think that what they need is more faith. I'm borrowing this from Andrew Womack. Oftentimes they think they need more faith. But what they really need is less unbelief. Some of y'all in this room, you would be walking on top of water if you stopped listening to CNN. I'm in trouble. You'd be walking on top of water if you stop listening to MSNBC, if you turn the news off periodically to build up, come on somebody, for you to, 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 to what, word am I, what I'm looking for, uh, meditate on the word of God yeah, yeah. to allow your faith a span of time to suffocate your unbelief. I, 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 I'm, I'm going I'm ahead of myself. I need to. Can I slow down? I want to slow down for for, for my, my friends over here. Amen. Glory to God. So. So what was the lesson of this day? What was the principle? The principle is this. If one can simply believe. Anything is possible. Wherever faith is present. The impossible is possible. The other day, actually Friday, I was I had took my, my car in. It hadn't been serviced for, you know, two years. You know, wasn't driving it that much pandemic and everything. And so I took it in for service. At the Mercedes Benz dealership. And uh you know how the dealer is. They want to tell you everything wrong with your car. Oh, yeah. yes, and all I want is an oil change and you just do an inspection. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of the kind, and then you know at the Mercedes dealership, they try to be sophisticated. So they take your, they, they get your ad, your phone, your phone number and they text you the, the, the things they, Fine, and then they want you to text them back where, yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that repair and go ahead and do this here and go while you're sitting there. And uh, one of them, they, they try to tell me that, you know, you need new brakes. Now, first he said, I needed new tires, Minister Allen. He said, I needed new tires. And he quoted me some, some Continental tires that was going to be 700 some dollars for two of them. Now, 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 some of y'all in here might not mind spending money like that. <laughs> but as long as my tires just come in contact with the ground, <laughs> I ain't spending no $700 on no tires. I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, OK. So, you know, now you have to understand in the in the middle of while they're doing this, this stuff on my car, I needed to take my herbs. You know, my cinnamon, my CoQ10 and my stuff like that, my, 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 my low dose app. I needed to take it and I hadn't eaten yet. So and it's approaching noon. And so I went on a walk down to the local store to get myself a sandwich. And on the way down there, I, I was praying in tongues. Isn't that what I told you all to do? Let this, isn't that what we did last week? I prayed in tongues. So when I get back, I see this text message. You need new tires. So. All of a sudden, thoughts start coming to my mind, you know. Contact the person who you got the tires from initially. OK, so I call them. I don't even know whether they're still in existence. I ain't been there in over two years. So they said, what did they say? I said, they said that the tires going to cost seven hundred dollars. She said, no, 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 no. She said. Come over here. You know, because sometimes she didn't want to say nothing negative. She said, because sometimes they and I knew where she was going. In other words, they're not familiar with this tire that you have. You've got plenty of tread. It may not look like a Mercedes Benz tire, which is what they equipped their original equipment, you know, with Continentals, you know, but you've got some Coopers on there and ain't nothing wrong with them and nothing wrong with them tires right now. She said, come on over. We're we'll measure the seat. 
Okay, that was one issue. But the next issue was, they said, your brakes in the rear are at five millimeters. Now, now, what did we preach last week? Huh? About that snare. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. That fowler. And she said, she, he, they said, your, your brake pads are only five millimeters. Now, now, understand where I'm going with this. We live in America. <laughs> we go by inches, <laughs> quarter inches, half inches, you know. So they're going to pull a fast one. They're going to bring me into the, the MKS system. That's metrics. Five millimeters. I've been in school a little bit now. Come on, somebody. Five millimeters. And I'm like, now what's, you know, I'm trying to count. What's a mil How big is a millimeter? It's five millimeters. So you know what I did? I sat there at the Holy Spirit gave me thoughts and I just Googled five millimeter brake pad. That's all I hit. Do you not know that thing came back from Google and said, if the mechanic can tell you it's five millimeters left on your brake pad, he could just as well have told you, you got 15,000 more miles on your brakes. Things that make you go, hmm. Don't get snared. And so once again, wherever faith is present, the impossible becomes possible. So I said, OK, I know what the game is now. Get them in here and upsell them. Now, let me get back to my message because some other things happened. I had to fix some other things myself on my car. But. You see, when somebody try to tell me that something is impossible. Within me, I sort of laugh. Because. Where they are. I'm in a whole different place. God has come through for me. I know you. I know y'all heard me say this over and over again. And you're going you're going as long as I'm alive, you're going to keep hearing me say it. He keeps coming through for me. So now 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 let's look at something. Jesus said in verse 23 of Mark chapter nine. He said all things are possible. To them that believe. The word possible is the Greek word dunata. Somebody say dunata. Not donut. Dunata. <laughs> and it expresses. <laughs> Y'all know I had, to, I had to laugh. And it expresses the idea of ability. Power. And one who is able and capable. Watch this. Or one who is competent. Somebody say competent. competent. See, the word dunata shares the same root as the word dunamis. Which is the Greek word for power. See, this emphatically tells us that there is a power that causes one to become able, that causes one to become capable or competent for any task. I need to say that again. When he says possible, he says all things are possible to them that believe it. So, this, so what it's saying is there's a power that makes itself available when we believe to make us become, become, hear that, become able, become capable or competent for any task. The word dunamis expresses this explosive power that comes on the scene and begins to operate in a person's life. It don't make no never mind how unfit or unqualified the person was before. This power, this dunamis, it supernaturally energizes. It supernaturally makes them capable for the task at hand. 
Here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. But now let's look at who is the type of person? Who is the type of individual who can accomplish these impossible feats? Jesus answered that question very clearly. He said, all things are possible to him that believeth. Uh, the ETH on the end of the word is very important. Muy importante. Come on, somebody. Believeth. See, the word believeth is the Greek word pistis, meaning faith. However, the tense that he's using here is not dealing with a person who has once believed. It's dealing with an individual, glory to God, who is believing. Come on, somebody. It's not talking about somebody who once had an experience of faith in the past. But what is dealing with is a person who is presently believing right now. Come on, somebody. Come on. He, he just didn't believe in the past. He, he is a believer. Come on, somebody. In other words, irregardless of what's facing me, I believe God. Come on, somebody. Irregardless of what they said, I believe God. Come on, somebody. So this individual, come on, that nothing is impossible to them. He, his faith is active. Oh, God, help me. His faith is active actively reaching forward right now to grab hold of what is God has what God has promised his his faith is habitually constantly consistently and unwavering straining forward to take hold of what God has shown them by faith somebody said it this way faith is the spark that ignites the impossible and causes it, it to become possible. See, when a person's faith is activated, it sets supernatural power in motion that enables that person to do what he normally would never be able to do. That's why Jesus put the onus of responsibility back on the father. Jesus knew what he could do. If you recall, he's the word that was spoken that brought everything that is into existence in the first place. I feel this here thing. So what he was saying is, I know what I can do. You know, but the deal is, what do you believe? Come on, somebody. He says, if thou can't believe all things are possible. You see, once, listen, once faith has been activated and remains activated, a person becomes enabled and empowered so that he is capable and competent. So I'm going to say it again. Capable and competent to do whatever God then told him to do. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. In other words, God has given Bethesda a mandate. Come on. We have a mandate from God. And it's causing us to push forward into new and uncharted territory. We're like Star Trek. We're going places we ain't never been before. See, 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 yeah, you hear what I'm saying? We ain't never been here before. Glory to Jesus' name. See, what I did, once we got the drawings, ink down on paper, I began to look at everything from every angle that I could possibly look at it. And I began to adjust my faith. To believe God for every single bit of it. No, when they said do the street, God, God is able. I said when they said do the street, God is able. You see what I did? I psyched myself out. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. I said, Lord, there's folks in here driving Cadillacs. There's folks in here driving Bentleys. 
Mercedes Benzes and, and they got good cars. So if they making us, if they're asking us to put two driveways in here, who want to drive their car down a pothole filled street and tear their stuff, tear their BMWs up? So in Jesus name, I agree. Because you still able. You got to understand he's still able. Y'all got to understand where I'm going with this. If a, if a business owner or a contractor or a developer who ain't studying God can pave a street, how much more can, can the children of God who claims God as not just a friend, but there's their heavenly father who understands that God is the creator? Come on, somebody that God spoke into existence everything that is. We have this God on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? They may look at these 50 or 60 chairs in here and say, how can they do it? Well, I read somewhere in a book of Psalms that said, by my God, I can run through a truth. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. Then I read somewhere else that said, God can do it by many or he can do it by few. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then I read, glory to God, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Come on, somebody. And so, glory to God, I had to keep my faith in engaged. I had, to, I had to push my faith clutch in. And put my faith in the right gear. You got to understand. See, it's easy to have faith when you can see the monies that you need already in the bank. But can you do that in a blip hole? Can you look not just in the natural, but can you see in the spirit? Come on, somebody. That my God shall supply all you need according to his riches. In glory by Christ Jesus. And so I take my eyes off of the church's bank account. Uh, come on, somebody. And so I put my eyes and I adjust my mind and I meditate till I can see this image of God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody help me preach today by saying amen. Oh, y'all don't want to help me today, but I feel this thing. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so glory to God, I keep my faith engaged. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're going to make you put some trees. I got faith for that. Come on. Hallelujah. They're going to make you put some new irrigation. I got faith for that. You know, they're going to make you do this. I got faith for that. You got to fix the, the, the uh, what you call it, the ramp in front of the church. I got faith for that. But now we need you to pave the street. And so, all things are possible to him that believeth. In other words, my faith is not going to hit a choke point. Because they've added something else to it. I don't know how God going to do it. But I know he is. Can I mess with you today? I remember Sister, sister, uh, sister, sister, sister Gracia. Sister Loretta, I feel more confident. Sister Loretta was having a problem with a pain running down her leg. And she says, I know he can, but I need to know, will he do it? And she prayed that prayer to God. And she said that while she was standing there, she felt something move down her leg and come out her heel. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Hallelujah. You see, I begin to look at this project and I say, God, this part, God, that part, God. And I just get, you know what? After a while, get a whole thing to God. You see, if God has told us to do something, regardless of how big or how impossible it seems in the natural mind, you got to begin to tell yourself and I tell myself I can do it and, and, and I imagine it coming to pass. Yes, yes. You know, I look at the fact that we've got a license. What did he say he was? 
a counselor, what did he say he was? A licensed therapist up in here. And we got we gonna put some buildings up in here. So we can have some some licensed therapy going on up in here. Somebody say amen. Praise God. We've got refrigerators and freezers sitting in here. That we're gonna put some buildings so we can expand. This food distribution ministry. Yeah. Yeah. This is just the start. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. So I tell myself. We can do this. And after all, I tell myself. If it couldn't be done. Why would Jesus tell us to do it in the first place? Somebody say amen. 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 I'm getting ready to move. You see. The, the fact of the matter is, in God, all things are possible. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. 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 All things are possible. Turn the new Bibles to Romans chapter 10. See, Romans chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 8. In God, all things are possible. Am I doing good on time? I'm doing good on time. So therefore, it's up to you and it's up to me. To get our what? Our thinking yeah. in line with God's word. Yeah. Uh, I'm in trouble. Are you in Romans chapter 10? Yeah. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 says this. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth. And in thy heart. That is what? The word of faith, which we preach. Watch this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath what? Raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Say, I ain't done yet. For with the heart man believeth. Unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Glory to Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So these are the same set of scriptures. That we use when we're trying to get another an, an individual who has not yet received Christ as his savior to receive him as savior. Yes. Now, now it's important. Come on, somebody. It's important. Amen. To understand. I need to read that in an amplified. I'm sorry. I need to read it in the amplified Bible before I go further. It says, but what does it say? The word. God's message in Christ is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis and object of faith, which we preach because watch this. If you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe, which means to adhere to, to trust in and to rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Watch this. For with the heart a man believes, he adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ. And so is justified. He's declared righteous and acceptable to God. And with the mouth he confesses, he declares openly and speaks out freely his faith. And basically, and confirms his salvation. Last scripture. The scripture says no man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on and trusts in him will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. I got to work this. You see, the problem is oftentimes when we read this verse, these, 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 this text, we, we, we immediately see won't go to hell. We'll go to heaven. But the word salvation is a word, a Greek word, soteria. And it means deliverance, preservation, soundness, prosperity, 
happiness, rescue, and general well-being. I got to work this. You see, you see, you see, Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You see, you got to understand, glory to God, we've got to get our thinking in line with the word of God. You see, can I put this out there? And, 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 and I, and I'm going to put this out there. See, it ain't about how many scriptures you can quote from memory. It's about how many scriptures that you actually believe that you quote. Ah. It ain't about how many you can quote from memory. It's about how many of them scriptures that you quote that you actually believe. That was, I was at my wife and I, glory to God, some, I don't know, close to 20 years ago, we were at a world conference. Uh, Rod Parsley uh, World Conference. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Dominion Camp Meeting some years ago. And they had this one evangelist. I mean, he was bad. Woo! Every time it came time to, to lift the offering, he would say some fantastic stuff. He would say some amazing, I mean, you, I'm telling you, he would say some amazing things. Some amazing promises of God. And like, whoa, this dude is deep. And then Rod Parsley came up there right after this man got done one time, probably about the third session or something like that, or third day. He said, you know, man, now I know what the problem is with you. You know, in other words, Ron Parsley knew what this man's financial condition was. <laughs> he knew the condition of this man's ministry. He said, I know what your problem is. He said, you don't even believe half that stuff you're saying. In other words, you're saying stuff, but the problem is you don't believe it. Ooh. Ah. See, here is the most foundational lesson in the importance and power of the confession of faith found anywhere in the Bible. This is a principle that the Bible that God is establishing for all of us at the very beginning of our being saved. He's saying just as salvation is appropriated by heart, belief and spoken confession. His continuing working in our lives is advanced by the same means. Maybe you didn't understand what I'm saying. In other words, the way you get saved is the way you stay saved. And I ain't talking about one saved all way. I'm talking about glory to God. The way you get saved is the way your deliverance comes. The way your preservation comes. The way your prosperity comes. The way, come on, the way your happiness comes. It's believing, which is the same as receiving. Oh, God. I, st I tried. I started to, to change the title of this message, and I started to go into a place where, you know, it had been too deep. Because somebody told me, they said, Pastor, you go too deep. You got, to, you got to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to tell you, there, there, will be no, there is no conceiving without receiving. There's no conceiving. Without receiving. You can't get pregnant. With a hope. If you ain't received. The word of God. The receiving. Is tethered to. The believing. Some of y'all need to update. Your believing. <laughs> you know. You know how you periodically turn your computer on. And it says it's time for an update. Some of y'all, it's time for an update. Because if you're, if you're sitting under this, I, this is another thought, and I, let me put my finger so I don't go too far down this rabbit hole. You know, <laughs> Mother Dixon helped me with this. But you know that a pastor must really be given permission to pastor people. That's what the Holy Ghost gave me today. He said they have to give you permission. And I'm not talking about sign this piece of paper to give me permission to pass to you. No, no, no. Permission. In other words, you must open the door of your heart and allow the wealth of wisdom that God put in me to be poured down inside of you. You got to give me permission. Without permission, there's no conceiving. There's no. Come on. Now, I've been. Hey, glory to Jesus name. Thank you, God. 
That was a pat on the back from the Holy Ghost. What he's showing me is individuals that don't trust my teaching. They're always looking somewhere else for a greater sounding word. As if the sound of the word is going to unlock your unbelief. How would you like if you're parenting your children and your children don't listen to a thing you say, but always listening to the next door neighbor? Oh, I know I ain't going to get no amens on that. They always listening to the next door neighbor or they always listen to somebody up in Brentwood. As if your stuff down in Moreno Valley ain't good enough for them. What they don't realize is some people's ministry started off on the 50 yard line of the football field. Uh, and so it appears on the surface that they've made a lot of progress because they're already close to the goal. But some of our ministries didn't start even inside the stadium. I'm preaching to you ain't saying we didn't even we didn't even start on the on the we was way, way, way somewhere else. So when you look at me and see me at least on the 20 yard line, don't forget, <laughs> I started way outside the stadium. At least I'm in there now, Jim. I said, Jim, at least I'm in there now. Come on, somebody. And all the hurdles that I overcame on my way to get in the stadium, Can you understand what I'm talking about? All the hurdles, all the things I overcame. Glory to God. God is using all of that. Because I'm an overcomer. Come on, somebody. I'm an overcomer. Let me get done. So it's not about how many scriptures that you can memorize and quote from memory. It's about how many scriptures that you quote you actually believe. Come on, somebody. The word confess. Uh, it's the Greek word, homo legeo or homo logeo. It has the connotation. This is deep. It has to, you might want to read, look, look at this message again on YouTube. But it has the connotation of a binding public declaration by which a legal relation is, contractive, is, is contractually established. You, you hear what I'm saying? It's a binding declaration that establishes a legal, a contractually established relationship. In other words, our words contract from our side, <laughs> you know, the salvation that God has fully provided from his side. So watch this. So and that's called saving faith. So beginning with this understanding of saving faith, we've got to grow in active faith. In other words, we can't just believe God so we can escape the wrath to come. We've got to believe God for all of our needs. <laughs> I, 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 let me help. Let me bring this down a little bit. Come on, let me bring this down a little bit. You see, <laughs> I, I'm you, a lot of things is hitting my mind. The, the, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that at this point in the game, <laughs> we should be progressing in faith. I said at this point in the game, we should be progressing in faith. We should not be having problems having our basic needs met. Come on, somebody. You got to understand here that father, the problem he had because he was because he didn't brought his son to the disciples who should have known something, should have had some power functioning in their life. Y'all want me to get done? Somebody say get done, pastor. Tell, tell me get done. Look, who's looking at your life? Who's looking at your life, looking for an example, looking for some hope, looking for something to hold on to, but it's absent from your life, and so glory to God, they're having a problem with believing. Yeah. This
this man that was having a problem with believing, come on somebody, because he brought his son to people who should have been able to demonstrate the power of God. God not only heals, he prospers. He not only heals, he delivers. God saves. This word is homo logeo. We've got to say and believe the same thing the word of God says. We've got to be one. Say the same thing. Not just say the same thing. Believe the same thing. Something's wrong. I was reading in the Bible about all the different times where Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to, be rise, I'm going to rise again on the third day. And then when he gets crucified, Mary, Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, they go to the tomb. Two angels are there. The angels tell him, hey, what you looking? Why seek ye to live in amongst the dead? He's risen. Just like he said. So they go. <laughs> and if you notice, they're not listed as the original apostles or the disciples. But they go and tell the disciples. And you know what happened with the disciples? They didn't even believe. They didn't even believe. He done told them that they walked with him for three and a half years. And then when it's told them by somebody else that he wrote, they don't even believe it. Here's another one. Peter in jail. Herod didn't cut off. Uh-huh. Now he's going to try to cut off. He's going to try to kill Peter on Easter or after Easter. But the Bible says the church was praying. Without ceasing. What were they praying? Lord, they, well, I don't know what they were praying. But I know they wasn't believing. Probably the only one that was believing. <laughs> I don't know who was believing. Because when, the, but because when Peter got let loose and went to the door and knocked, let me in, y'all. God then set me free. The person who was at the door thought it was, they were tripping. Wait, you, maybe you don't understand where I'm going to. So what, I'm, what God is showing me is people do. People will spend time in prayer and don't even believe their own prayers. When God is bringing the answer, they don't even believe it. Therefore, what, there's no conceiving without receiving. In other words, when they're praying, I know, oh, I, thank you, Holy Spirit. The problem is this. When they're praying, they really ain't even open up their heart. So that God can communicate to them. So that they can be in that place that when he speaks to them, they see it. So therefore they can believe it. So when they when it starts coming into manifestation, they know that's God. That's God. That's God. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's God. How come? Because when they were praying, they weren't just shouting out to God. They weren't, no. They were opening themselves up for a two-way communication so that God could download into them so that they could receive the answer to the prayer. Is this, you understand where I'm going with this here now? There's no conceit. How are you going to give birth to anything if you ain't received the thing? A woman can't get pregnant without a seed. She got to receive a seed. Shows the seed, huh? And see, when the two things match up, right? Y'all don't want to go in the Bible. But that, when she conceives, the word is the seed. You got to receive the word in order to conceive the promise. There's a contract that we have with God. And he tells us, believe in your heart. Believe, not in your brain. Really believe. 
And Jesus took to another level. He said, believeth. In other words, what I promise still stands. Yes, yes, yes. If I said I'm your shepherd, I didn't say I'm your shepherd when you get a, a pay increase like PJ just got. No. He said the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, yes. Is. See, some of us, especially as preachers, we need to do some dictionary work sometimes. Because that's what we major in. We're almost like lawyers. We need to understand words. When it says is. Is. It didn't say I am when. Is. Meaning all the time. I always, he all, that's why Moses says, who should, who should I say sent me? He said, tell him I am. I am. You mean when stuff, I am. You mean when I need, I am. You catching where I'm going with this here? Somebody said, I, Pastor, I'm going to tell you how much that project going to cost. I said, what's it going to cost? Man, that's a, he, he walked away, brother ain't contact. It's going to cost 300 and some thousand dollars. And he was gone. L listen, I ain't even asked him for no money. He's a contractor. See, so watch me. So in his mind, he's looking at my shell. <laughs> I'm in trouble, man. He's looking at my shell. And he's looking at my earth suit. And based on this here earth suit, ain't no way I can do this. See, but that was before them buildings showed up. Did y'all catch what I'm saying? Now, now, the devil would try to rush me to try to make me hurry up. But see, I'm doing and, and do and make the wrong step. But see, if some of y'all that's following us on Facebook or uh, YouTube for our Bible studies, you know, I'm talking, I'm teaching on the Holy Spirit and the gifts. Now, I, 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 if, let me give you a glimpse. I'm studying, you know, the gift of faith. And you know what faith is? You know why a lot of folk mess up? They think, I said it, and boom. When you enter the gift of faith, I'm stepping down, PJ. I'm stepping down here. He said, I move too fast. When you enter the gift of faith, the gift of faith is not, is, see, the gift of faith does not work a miracle. The gift of faith receives a miracle. And there's a difference. It receives a miracle. Yeah. Also, the gift of faith has the ability. Hey, God, I feel you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, I, I don't want to scare my guests. The gift of faith, it has the ability yeah. inherent and interwoven in the gift yeah. to hang in there yeah. over long periods of time. Yeah. 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 Over long periods periods of time in other words it's constant it's not even based on the situations and the circumstances it's connected to what God has said and I'm getting ready to go home the gift of faith is different than the faith that everybody has because it's a supernatural faith. Ah, it's different. You see, there's a saving faith. That's a faith that when you hear the word of God preached and it is received, is believed, and Jesus is confessed. Can I, can I say it this way? See, when you, the truth is when you receive the word, you receive Jesus. <laughs> because he's the word. But, so there's saving faith that gets you saved. Uh -huh. Then there's faith that everybody has. General faith. Uh -huh. But then there's the Holy Ghost baptized gift of faith. Yeah. That's greater than the other kinds of faith. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's supernatural. Yeah. That's why some people, they can sit up there and say this here thing. They can sound powerful. But when you look at their life, ain't nothing there. All right, all right. 
It's like having a sign on the store that this is a delicatessen. But when you go up in the delicatessen, the word delicatessen, deadly, you look in there and you don't see no meat. I'm stepping back to the podium. Anybody get anything out of this message today? So in my closing, I want to encourage you to work on you. You know, get that unbelief out of there. Instead of trying to memorize the whole Bible, let God give you a word. You see, this word is logos. But when faith, the gift of faith is functioning, it's that individual has received a rhema. Rhema. And we can we can we can hopscotch through this Bible and pull down all kind of promises. Every believer can do that. But when a person has that faith working, that supernatural faith, it's a specific word that God has spoken. And that individual knows it's God. Everybody else might say he's tripping. But it's that gift of faith. It's receiving a miracle. Come on, somebody. It's receiving a miracle. Mother, do you, are you with me? It's receiving a miracle. It's, it's saying, I've got, to, I've got to teach this church to elevate us, to get us where we need to be. I'm coming back down again, PJ. I got to get you where we need to be, yeah. not me need to be. Yeah. I may be there, but I can't get there by myself. Right. So God gives me the wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. On how to systematically, step by step by step, yeah. bring us all up yeah. to a place in our faith yeah. Yeah. to where we're unified. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, mother. Where we're on one accord. And we can believe God for what seemed last year to be impossible. Yeah. I'm going to step, get closer, y'all. So I'm going to put my mask on. Uh oh, they're seeing all my stuff in here. <laughs> Brother got beard combs and stuff. <laughs> Praise God. That's all right. I tell you one thing you know I'm real, though. Praise God. Ain't no fake up in here. Amen. So I want to pray. Let me get my notes so I can just pray and get, get us to go home. Praise God. So I want to encourage you today to believe that all things is possible. You say that, you talking to me, Pastor? Thank you. I wasn't talking against you. If you're in the room, you're a member. Thank you. I don't want people to think I'm picking on somebody. You know, I'm just trying to do what God gave me to do. I want you to, to encourage you, uh-oh, to believe God. That all things are possible. We got to push that doubt. Come here, Brother Patrick. Sit right here. We got to push that doubt and that unbelief out the way. Sit right on there. You got to push it out the way. That's your problem. All of us has been given the measure of faith. Some of us have, you know, got the gift of faith functioning. But you got to measure of faith. Got to push that doubt out the way. Amen. Some, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Why did, now, why you give me that thought? Some folks scared to get vaccinated. Uh oh, I'm really I'm gonna stay on this side of the room. <laughs> Some folks scared to get vaccinated because what they didn't heard. And see, now, now Pastor ain't I'm not a a, a politician, <laughs> and I'm not a medical doctor. I have a doctor degree in that Bible. So what my recommendation is not just take my word. Go talk to your doctor. He should be the one drawing blood from you, taking your, your you know, your, your, your body fluids to see what's going on inside you that could recommend to you whether you should or not. Is that making sense to somebody? Don't go by what I say. Go by what, you know, common sense. You see, unbelief, this is how unbelief come in. By listening to all kind of bunk data, bunk information. Remember a couple weeks I taught y'all a lesson 
I said one person was both two people was given information. One believed, got killed. The other one, the one, one of them didn't believe, got killed. The other one believed and was saved. So you got to take this, is, you know. Am I did, did y'all mad at me because I said that? I'm not preaching. Go get a vaccine. I ain't preaching. Go not get one. I'm saying that fear will negate faith. So now if you're doing it, if you're not if you're doing it because of fear or you're doing it not because or you ain't doing it because of fear. Both of them two can negate faith. Yeah, am I making sense? So you got to watch what information is hitting your brain. Man, if, if, if we looked at all the shootings going on and there's been a lot, somebody, some 13 year old shot some other 13 year old in the school, you'd be scared to send your kids to school. They're shooting at the school. And they, they, my mama said a long time ago, she said, you know, they got them chicken little saints. Now, Esther May used to say some stuff, y'all. She said, got them chicken little saints. Y'all notice the, the, the chicken little? If they get one little drip. The sky is falling. The sky. <laughs> the sky is falling. The sky ain't falling. Let's stand to our feet. I'm getting done. Y'all think y'all got the gist of what I'm saying? Them chick, she, my mama used to say some stuff. Them chicken little saints be strutting about this tall, just strutting like she the, the baddest thing. Like she on de demon patrol or something. <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to be funny, but I seen her lay hands on a grown man. The man flew over some chairs. And she has some power operating in her life. Y'all ready to pray? Okay. Is y'all hot in here? Is it hot? Y'all need y'all good? OK, good. I mean, the air conditioner is working properly. We're going to pray. <laughs> good. That means the stuff is getting pulled up out of here. Say, Father, Father I, believe your word. I believe your word. I will not listen, will not listen to, the to the naysayers who haven't accomplished anything. They want to halt and entangle me with their fear and unbelief. It doesn't matter how unqualified I may have been. You're explosive, supernatural power will. Energize me, Energize me and make me, and make me capable. capable. Faith, comes Faith comes when I hear your word, I hear your word. And, I am and I am determined to release, to release my, faith my faith through obedient, through obedient action, action regardless, regardless of, the of the difficulty or impossibility. Before me, I know that when faith is present, anything is doable. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me instantly discern when somebody is not in agreement with you, so I won't allow. They're polluting doubt to get into my heart. I'm determined to push doubt and unbelief out of the way. I believe God and it will be exactly as he spoke it to me. I believe God. Therefore, all things all things, all things, look at somebody, make sure your mask is on, look at somebody, all things, she said don't look at her, all things, we, we, we far enough apart, huh, get out of here, all things are possible to me, now give him praise.
I'm not done yet. Now that was your pray- that was your prayer. We prayed. Yeah. Now we're gonna confess something. Right. Y'all ready? Yeah. I, confess I confess that my faith, that my faith ain't, just ain't just past tense. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. This, very this very moment. My faith, my faith is actively, actively reaching, reaching forward, right forward right now to grab hold, to grab hold of what God has promised. My faith faith is unwavering, unwavering, straining straining forward to take hold of of that goal set before me. me. My faith faith ignites ignites the impossible, impossible. causing it to become possible possible. and set supernatural power power in motion motion that enables me me to do what others thought, watch me, that I would never be able to do. You hear that? With confident expectation. Say it now. With confident expectation. I say it loud. I believe God. Now, this should have been louder than that. I believe God. And all things are possible. To me, because I believe. Now give God some praise. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. We give God the praise. Wherever faith is present, the impossible becomes possible. It don't make a difference where. It don't don't make a difference your skin color, your ethnicity, your your, your place of origin makes no difference. The Bible says God is rich unto all. That call on his name. Now let's give him some praise up in here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We honor you right now, Father. We bless you right now. Father, I decree the blessing over everybody in this room that hears the sound of my voice right now. Father, I thank you, Father God, that the impossible shall be possible for them. Father God, homes are being purchased right now. Credit scores are being improved right now. Wisdom from heaven is being imputed to your people now in Jesus name. Thank you, Father, for doors are opening wide open, wide open for your people. Rivers. Of what, what I'm looking for, give me help me with that. Of impediments are being parted right now. Your people, Father, shall walk through on dry ground in the name that's above every name, the matchless name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Praise God. That's all I have today. God bless you. Let the words of my mouth mouth and the meditation of my heart heart be acceptable in thy sight. sight. O Lord, Lord, my strength strength and my redeemer. redeemer. And let the church say, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all be blessed. Stay safe in Jesus name. Y'all still love me? I said, do you still love me? Do you still love me? All right, then. God bless you. What is those lens cleansers? Oh, that'll work, too. Oh, praise God. Thank you. Thank you for loving me.